Hi, Angie here from MyNextTablet.com. Today with an unboxing of the new Huawei MatePad Paper, a 10.3 inch tablet with an e-ink display. All right, let's start the unboxing of the Huawei MatePad Paper. It's available in a couple of countries now starting at 499 euros. It should be pretty similar in US dollars, around 500 US dollars. I have stopped reviewing tablets from Huawei because they don't ship with the Google Play Store anymore and it's also not that easy to install those. However, this MatePad paper is really, really interesting. That's why I bought it. And yeah, let's start this unboxing. Inside the box, we've got the tablet itself first and it does look already a bit more like a traditional ebook reader than a standard tablet. Then we've got the pen the Huawei M Pencil, that pen is included. Then we got the standard charger. And then what's quite nice are two extra tips for the pen. Then we got the typical paper stuff like warranty card and so on. Then we've got the standard USB-C cable. And what's really nice is that we get the Huawei folio cover for the MatePad paper. I only paid 499 euros and the M Pencil is included and this folio cover is included. That's nice, you don't have to buy a cover extra, which is usually the case with most tablets. And yeah, since I shot the first part of this video, about a day has passed already and I did play quite a bit with the Huawei MatePad paper already. It's a very, very interesting e-ink tablet. So let's check out the design first. We have, we have a 10 inch e-ink screen here, that's very obvious. There's no webcam on the front. We get um, relatively thin screen bezels on those three sides, but then on this side we've got a quite big bezel and that's how you hold this tablet. On the back we have no back camera, nothing on the back except this plastic. And this looks like leather, but I'm pretty sure it's not like real cow leather. You know, it's fake leather, dinosaur leather, uh, basically. And yeah, it looks nice, but it feels a bit plasticky. What I immediately notice is that it is really, really light, considering that this is a 10 inch device, 10.3 inches. It weighs 360 gram, which is really light for a 10 inch device. It's 6.65 millimeters thin. And also on the side here, we don't have metal. It's all plastic. On the sides, we've got two speakers, one speaker here and one speaker here. And the sound quality of those speakers is surprisingly good. It is quite loud and sounds pretty nice. I've been surprised by that because I didn't expect that from an e-ink tablet. We've got some microphones, then we've got a power button over here and then a volume rocker over there. And here we get a standard USB-C 2.0 port. There's no micro SD card slot and also um, nowhere to put a SIM card because there's only a Wi-Fi version. I really like that we've got a fingerprint scanner built into this home button and the fingerprint scanner works fast and seems reliable. You will always notice that it looks like the tablet is a little bit laggy, for example, when using the fingerprint scanner here, but that's not due to the system, it's due to the screen. An e-ink display always looks a bit laggy compared to a standard LCD. So the design I think is quite nice. I really like how light it is. And yeah, of course, a full metal body always feels a bit more premium, but when using some something with what you will use for reading a lot, like this is an e-ink tablet, um, it's nicer to have something that's light than to have a metal body. So I think in this case, it's good that Huawei chose plastic. Now let's get to this screen and I like the cover so let's turn it off. We've got a 10.3 inch e-ink display here which has a resolution of 1872 pixels times 1404 pixels. So the pixel density is similar to a full HD screen on 10 inches and that always means that text and icons and so on look sharp enough. But they're not as sharp as on a Galaxy Tab S8 or Apple iPad Pro where the pixel density is higher. The special thing about an e-ink display is that it does not need any energy 
when the background light is turned off. So let me turn it off and in fact early ebook readers didn't even have a background light. You can use it completely without a background light as you can see here. It's turned off and that means that if no light is shining onto the screen, like from this side it's really dark, I'm just standing here with a dark background, there's only one light coming from that side, it means you don't see much, like it's not clearly visible, even though the viewing angles are really good. But then when you turn it towards the light, it gets yeah really nicely readable, like it's very well, very, very well readable once you're in the sun or once you've got a light shining onto it. But if you want to use it in the dark, like you've seen, you can just turn on a background light here and then you can read it even in the dark no matter where you are. This is similar to the Kindle Paperwhite which has the same kind of technology. The screen never refreshes unless something changes. That's another special aspect of an e-ink screen and that means it uses way less power than a standard LCD does which always uses energy even if you're just having like the home screen like I do now. But right now the screen is not using any energy except for the background light that I turned on but that I can also turn off. There are also a couple of downsides with these types of e-ink screens and mostly the refresh rate is really slow especially compared to a standard 60 hertz display and even more so compared to a 120 hertz display like we get on an iPad Pro or Galaxy Tab S8. You can see here the system is not laggy, it's just that the screen refresh rate of those e-ink screens is really low. So that's certainly one downside. Let me go to the browser because I noticed a couple of things. For example, um, when scrolling a bit you can see it's not as fast as it is, like as, as a standard tablet would be, but that's to be expected. But I did found another problem and I hope you can see it in the video that sometimes there's a little bit of ghosting, especially when you've got a photo here, like here, then you see a little bit of the writing that was before that. You can see it over here. It's a kind of ghosting that I noticed in the browser. I guess that's another downside of this kind of screen. Also the photo quality is not amazing. Of course it's black and white but it's not like amazing. It, like the, the transition from the highlights to the shadows is not super smooth as it should be usually even when you have a black and white photo. But you can actually change the way the display refreshes. I think the best one is to use it at smart. I found it to be the best way but you can also go to normal and then the photo quality I think is a little bit better but the scrolling is not fun, you can see it here. But it's probably better to use the normal version when you're reading a comic book or something, then it might be better. But when using it like in the browser, better leave it to smart, then it's, yeah, it just looks better when scrolling because things are still quite readable that way. By the way, you can use the MatePad paper to watch videos on YouTube or somewhere else in the browser because it's a standard Android browser and you can see here it does work and actually like I said the sound quality is surprisingly good. However, obviously, I mean you can see it here, it does not really make sense to watch a lot of YouTube on an e-ink tablet. It works but the refresh rate it's just so slow that it doesn't make really sense. Unless maybe you're listening, mostly listening to a podcast on YouTube and just want to see some faces every now and then. But yeah, it works but obviously doesn't make that much sense. Now let's get to the Huawei M Pencil and I think I'm pretty sure this is the same pen that also works with the MatePad tablets. It has a built-in battery and it's charged inductively by placing it on the side of the tablet and it does not work when it's not charged. Similar to the Apple Pencil but unlike the S Pen from Samsung which also works when the pen is not charged. So um, yeah the pen feels nice, it's a standard pen, uh, comfortable to hold in your hands, it has a relatively thick tip and also a hard tip similar to the Apple Pencil and again unlike the Samsung S Pen. And it works surprisingly well on this MatePad paper tablet. I wrote a bit with it already and you can see here it really works well. Of course the refresh rate is not as fast as on a 120Hz tablet where the pens like on the iPad Pro and Galaxy Tab S8 react like almost instant. 
Here, the writing lags behind the screen a little bit, but it's surprisingly usable. Like, I enjoyed writing with it. And also, the display, like when you write on it, it feels more like paper than on an iPad Pro or Galaxy Tab S8, where it really feels like you're writing on glass. This feels a little bit more like real paper would. And yeah, I enjoyed using the notes up here. It's a pretty decent one. And I can imagine that somebody buys this just for handwritten notes and then to occasionally surf the web a bit and read a couple of books and then, you know, do a lot of handwriting. Maybe you're journaling or just writing a lot of notes for your work or something or for learning. So I think the M Pencil is a really nice feature here. Now let's get to the internal hardware very quick. Inside the MatePad paper runs a Huawei Kirin 820. E processor. We also get 4 GB of RAM and a 64 GB internal storage. Like I said, there's no 4G or 5G version. Now that Kirin 820E is a lower end chipset, but in this case, it really doesn't matter because, I mean, you've seen that the screen refresh rate is quite low and you won't be able to play games with it anyways. And the processor is certainly fast enough for the browser, for ebooks, and for the notes. So yeah, it's okay that Huawei shows us like a lesser, less powerful chipset here. Now let's get to the software on the Huawei MatePad paper runs Harmony OS in version 2.1, which is based on Android. And that actually means that you can install like Android APKs from the web and they should work fine except that it's an earring screen, of course, but the app itself and the software should work fine on here. Now you see that it doesn't really look like Android because the interface is customized quite heavily, specifically for this MatePad paper, which is good. Uh, we've got the home screen here where you have your calendar, your inbox from your emails and your notes and the Huawei books thing. If we go here, we go to the notes, like similar to Samsung notes, You've got your several notes here. Then we've got the bookshelf, which are the books you downloaded from the Huawei bookstore. I just downloaded one random book that was on the front. I'm not sure how good the selection here is. And then you can go to the apps and there's the Huawei App Gallery, which is their version of the App Store, of the Google Play Store, which like I said, is not pre-installed. Um, because of the trade war between the US and China, I'm I'm sure you know of that. And yeah, the app gallery is really limited. There are just a couple of apps that you can install. There's just this featured section. And I mean, I can't find anything else. And there's only this me thing, which is like, you know, your settings and updates. And yes, the selection of apps you can install is quite low. There's some audiobook thing, Microsoft Office, which is great. And then we've got um, WPS Office, which is pre-installed. I downloaded Microsoft Office already. Then we've got the browser, which works fine, just like the Android browser, file manager, clouds app, calendar, email, calculator, and so on. And I did install the Kindle app and the Audible app using the APKs from the internet. That's Huawei makes it really easy sometimes to find these APKs. And yeah, I installed the Kindle app and the Audible app, and they work fine, like with the Kindle app, I already read a bit of a book and it works just like on a Kindle. Um, I mean, I'm using the Kindle Paperwhite usually to read my books and it works the same when once you install the Kindle APK here, that's quite nice. So in this case, I don't think it's too much of a downside that the Google Play Store is not supported because you won't install games on here anyway. I mean, in theory, maybe it makes sense to install like a chess game or Sudoku or something like that, but no like demand a game, like no PUBG Mobile or Fortnite would make sense on the screen. And also like photo editing apps and so on, they don't make sense on an e-ink tablet. So in this case, I think it's okay that there's no Google Play Store because the apps you use are limited anyway. So, so much about the software. All right, and that's it. That's my unboxing and first impression of the Huawei MatePad paper. My first impressions are really good, but I'm not sure yet if I will recommend it. Um, I still have to use it first because I don't know if I will like use it privately. 
So I want a couple of weeks to test it before I give any kind of recommendation, if at all. But it's certainly a very, very interesting tablet. Like I enjoy playing with it so far already. I like that we get an e-ink screen, the performance seems fine because the screen refresh rate is not that high anyways. The M pencil works pretty well. I really like that it is so light and I can imagine it to be a good ebook reader that you also take handwritten notes with and maybe sometimes research a bit on the web. And yeah, for that it seems to be pretty decent. But yeah, now I have to start my proper review. If you have any questions what I or any suggestions what I should try on this MatePad paper, write me in the comments and then I will see if I can include that for my final review. All right, that's been my unboxing and first impression of the Huawei MatePad paper. I'm Andrew from MyNextLevel.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.